Hello. Hello, Joey. <laughs> hey. How is everything with you? It's okay. I just arrived at the venue here in Berlin. Very good. And uh, how are the shows going so far? It's good. I mean, we, we started um, in Switzerland, went down to Milano, and then into Germany. And, and Germany's been great. Um, well, ev every show's been good because it, they're, they're different. It's a different show this time. It's more special, more personal, and it's very different from what we have ever done before. And I think people like it. Yeah. You know, I was looking at the set list. It is quite long. Is it the biggest set list you guys ever played? It is perhaps the 30th anniversary show at Sweden Rock Festival. I believe we played a similar amount of songs. <laughs> But, but that was only one show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a tour. So now we're playing like 27 songs every night instead of one show. So, uh, it's the biggest tour as far as, you know, songs go. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and it's different because we show, show footage, film footage from the documentary yeah. and we show, so people get a, an experience. It's like an evening with Europe. You know? Yeah. And uh, when is the documentary going to be released? Uh, in the beginning of next year. Okay. C can we expect a lot of surprises in there? <laughs> well, yeah, there's some funny stories and there's some, there's some detail that people may not know before. Um, and there's footage that never been seen before. So we found all these VHS tapes, um, which we um, transferred and are using. It's parties in hotel rooms and backstage in Wings of Tomorrow, rehearsal and, and all kinds of stuff. Us in San Francisco when we um, mixed and, and I sang the, the Final Countdown stuff. So um, also the, the surprises, I don't know, but Benny Anderson from ABBA was in, is in, have been interviewed in it and um, a few other people actually, Ghost, uh, Tobias from Ghost, and uh, Mika, Mikael Okefeld from Opeth, because those guys are our friends, but they also grew up with Europe, <laughs> listening to the band. So it's really, really uh, flattering that they would want to take part of it. Yeah. And, you know, for you being a musician you know, for this long end with Europe, does it surprise you that after 40 years, you know, of, of career, that people still show up to your concerts and know the songs and really, you know, are into what you guys have done for so long. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it makes us feel really happy and uh, emotional, actually. It's a very emotional tour, this, because we realized how long we've been together as a band and we realized how long these fans have been there for us and we see even younger new fans, a new generation too, so... It's very uh, emotional. It's 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 a great tour in that respect. It's really friends and every coming together. So it's really yeah, cool like that. Yeah, well, that's good. And uh, you got a new single, "Hold Your Head Up," uh, which is you know the first taste of new Europe music. I know you guys are planning going into the studio next year. Um, how was this? Uh, you know. How many songs, first of all, do you guys already had or have in mind to record? But why did you just decide to record this one? We wanted to get this ready before the tour and the documentary. So we focused on this song so we could have something out together with the tour and the documentary. That's why we released one song now. But we have a handful of songs, great ideas that we want. We want to record it, the album next year. And uh, whether we um, do it in the beginning or in the middle, I, I don't know yet. But we are, we have some great ideas. And Hold Your Head Up is just the first one, basically. Yeah. And you work with uh, with Klaas, the, you know, the producer that worked with Ghost yeah. as well. How, how was his experience working, you know, with him? Because he's a newer guy, you know, probably a different vision from what you guys might be used to. How was uh, working with him? It was a great experience. I mean, we all liked it. Uh, the whole band liked to do more stuff with him. We don't know whether he's going to be the producer on the album yet, but no, we don't know yet. I mean, that would it would be an, uh, an interesting idea, actually, 
but we haven't decided yet. But we were very happy finding him and working with him. He's very professional, and he's also listened to Europe when he was younger, and so he's he knows how we think. And the, the procedure with him was amazing. It, it, it went really smooth, and he's very talented, very talented man. He's a guitar player as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. And you know, this song "Hold Your Head Up," you know, is quintessential Europe, as a bit of what Europe has been in the beginning and what Europe is nowadays. Is that the way forward for the other songs that you guys have? You know, having a mix of what made. Europe, you know, like a big band, and what Europe is now in the 21st century. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a good it's a good mixture in this uh, in the song. We we never really set out to do that. It was a, an idea I had, and I I sent it to the guys, and everybody's like, "Yeah, that's great. Let's do that." So, um, it's a natural progression. But I think you're right. I think it's a little bit of some melodies, especially in the verses and the end of the verses there, there's melodies that reminds you of some of the earlier stuff, but maybe the chorus and some, and the riff a little bit, it's also quite fresh and, and more modern, I suppose. Um, so yeah, it's got, it's got a bit of everything, but it's still sounds like Europe, which is really cool. Yeah. And you know, when you play all these, you know, these big set lists, you guys go all over your career Does that inspire you guys as well when you're writing music? It gives you, you know, newer ideas because probably some of the songs you haven't listened or played in a while and, you know, probably brought memories of those songwriting moments. Uh, does that happen when you guys play, you know, these old, older songs and then you get inspired to write as well? It can happen. I mean, it was it's quite, um, when we put together this tour, it was quite emotional going through all the albums, all the lyrics, all the songs, and you get reminded of things that you, that influenced you to, to write the lyrics and the songs. So yeah, it reminds you of, of certain ways of writing. Yeah, it does. But it also, when you, it's two different things really, being in a studio and being in a live situation. Yeah. In the studio, you want to feel creative. You want to move forward as well. Whereas a uh, concert is also nostalgia. It's both. It's some new songs, but it's a lot of nostalgia. So new, new, new recordings are, are ne not necessarily nostalgic like that. Yeah. But, you know, but... Um, Yeah, it inspires us to, but it's more emotion. It's more thinking, man, we're still together after all these years, and uh, <laughs> this this is great fun. You know? Was there any uh, any of the song on the set list that uh, sort of surprised you? How good, you know, it really is as a song, and that you haven't played like in a while, and then you realize, you know, this is why haven't we played this more? Is there any song on yeah, the list? <laughs> Yeah, I reacted a bit to when we rehearsed and the first shows we did. I reacted. I, I missed always the Pretenders a little bit. I thought it's a great track and it's really nice live, really nice to play. Uh, also, Stormwind is fun to play. We realized we haven't played that so many so much. Um, so yeah, there's there's been a few of these new tra not new tracks, but a few of these additions that have been very interesting. Memories been interesting as well. So yeah, it's. Um, It's kind of fun for us, too. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, I, I normally say if a band is having fun on stage, the, fan, the fans will have fun, you know, watching the concert. And I think that's yeah. the most important thing at the end of the day is you guys have fun first and we'll have fun as well. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And we get the energy from the audience as well then. So we get the energy back and it starts going around the room. And that's, that's the moment. That's those special moments, you know. And, and when you have a song like The Final Count, on, which is, you know, it's, I think it's bigger than you guys at this stage, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Do, do you ever like conceive a, a concert where you, you won't play that? 
song at all. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, maybe we've done acoustic shows, perhaps, without it, maybe. But we've never done a live show without it. There was one time that we were, we were, um, we were on our way to play Download in the UK for the first time. And we had this crazy idea that to not, this is the biggest festival in England. And, and we thought it would be great if we didn't play the final countdown. I think it's going to be quite a lot of media interest if we don't play it. So we had this crazy idea on the bus up to the, to the show. Let's take it out. Let's finish with rock tonight and then just uh, and walk off. The problem what happened was that particularly here was a lot of rain and traffic. So a lot of bands missed uh, their slots at the festival. So we took it, we took it as an omen that, uh, you know, we shouldn't even discuss it because it was canceled. The show was canceled. <laughs> so, and also the publicist and the manager that was with us, they were like so nervous when we had this idea because we were serious about it. Me yeah. and Nora was sitting there, okay, let's do it. Let's do this. Let's, let's drop it from the list and get, you know, that would cause a great reaction. It'd be great, you know. Yeah. Uh, it would it'd be like the whole 20,000 people go, Whoa, boo. Well, that would be quite fun, you know. Anyway, we didn't do it. We didn't play. <laughs> But, you know, you know, speaking of, you know, uh, crazy, crazy shows and, and stuff that can happen, do you have any memory of what was probably one of the most awkward shows you guys ever played? Oh, there's been so many different types of shows. Um I remember in Asia once the power went out completely. It was run by Diesel Power, and uh, I think it was Indonesia. And we played half of the set in the dark, nothing, only drums. <laughs> <laughs> That was crazy. Um, what else? I remember early, the first tour we did in Sweden. We ended up playing in front of twelve people because the promoter did some a mistake or something. So we we played a. Um, I played the whole, like, an hour and a half for 12 people. <laughs> so I remember that was quite... But it was kind of... It was embarrassing, but it was quite fun as well because everybody was enjoying themselves. So there's been, there's been many things, you know. <laughs> my, jeans, my jeans been, you know, um, broke in front. and You know, people <laughs> see my underwear and stuff. There's been all kinds of stuff. Uh, I can't remember anything, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's always, and you know, you spoke about the the show at Sweden Rock for the 30th anniversary. What other yeah. you know big shows that you you think that um, were very important for Europe? Well, there's been a few. I mean, um, Bloodstock. I think it was back in. I'm not sure what year. I'm, I'm thinking to 2006, seven, eight. Nine. I don't remember. But I remember I was playing this festival in in the UK. That's mainly for metal bands. Yeah. And we went there, and it was uh, quite soon after we started again. You know, 2004. Uh, and um, we just turned it around, and it was a great show. We got great reviews, and it sort of turned the things around in, for us in the UK. So that was really good moment. That Blood Book Festival, also Sweden Rock Festival 2004, when we came back our first show back with the new album Start From The Dark and we didn't know what to expect but it was a sea of people like 30,000 and they just welcomed us back it was incredible and what else have we done we did um, oh, there's been so many you know great shows we've done um, I mean last year's tour with Whitesnake was pretty 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 great we yeah. thought it was one of the best tours that we've been on The, the audience was big audiences, arenas, and some of those shows. I remember Manchester in particular. So Manchester 2022, that was pretty awesome. It was just the, the, the welcome back after the pandemic and the, the warmth and the friendly people and loud and singing. It was amazing. Yeah. But there, there's been a few, you know, cool. shows like that. And, you know, just going back to when you guys returned, you know, back into early 2000s, um, what do you all, did you ever thought or you, do you th thought in a way that uh, what if there is no one there? <laughs> what if people forgot yeah. about us? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of 
course, that, that was, it was a bit nervous because we did one little show in Norway out in the woods before the day before. Um, so you have to call him on the phone, I think. Um, yeah. So when we get to Sweden Rock, we were like, what's going to happen? We didn't even know. I mean, we knew Sweden Rock has an audience, yeah. but we didn't know it was going to be a sea of 30,000 people. And, and also Start From The Dark was done in the winter. Nobody really knew we were in the studio and we wanted to do it in secrecy because we didn't want to be bothered and we didn't want to get any pre outside pressure. We yeah. wanted to do our own thing. So yeah, we, you're right. I mean, we came up, we didn't know. We knew that we had a lot of fan letters and stuff wanting us to come back, but we had, we didn't have a crew. I mean, what's going to happen? So that Sweden Rock Festival was very important for our self-confidence and for the future. Yeah. And, you know, when Europe, you know, exploded after the final countdown, you know, a lot of attention, a lot of eyes were on the band. Uh, you know, we know a lot of, you know, crazy stories from rock and roll bands. Did you ever yeah. encounter any, you know, craziness from that success that you guys had? Or you guys were always, you know, a bit more level headed with that? Or, you know, there were moments where you guys were just crazy. <laughs> I, uh, the same again. I mean, there are so many stories. Um, uh, so, but we used to we used to party more in the beginning. Um, uh, me, me personally, I, we were quite a wild band in the beginning when we t started touring in '83, '84, '85. Um, there was it was quite heavy. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We always backstage. We always had. Lots of people. We invited some audiences in in the dressing rooms. It was always full. It was always everybody sitting there drinking beer, talking, having fun. But it came, became a bit more serious around eighty six, um, eighty five, eighty six. Started recording Final Countdown, and especially for me, uh, there's someone calling here. Um, I'm on Stefan's phone, and I think yeah. John Nor calling <laughs> calling him. Anyway, he's going to get. Uh, sorry about that. I'm It's talking okay. to Mick <laughs> and telling Mick to call Norm. He's probably coming into the venue and no one's there because I'm on staff on the phone. Um, yeah, where were we? Oh, we were on the, those crazy, you know, times before recording the final countdown. <laughs> A lot of parties and stuff. Yeah. That's... Those days, I mean, uh, he's trying, I'm just being a young hat. He's trying to call here, so wait till he's done. Okay. Um, I do remember uh, being uh, in cities like Madrid and Paris. I'm sure getting a mail. Um, in Paris, and after the shows, we were like, "Let's go out on town." And it was it was a uh, after the shows, we would go to clubs usually. Uh, Ian walking around with two drinks. He, he always ordered two drinks because uh, he was always afraid the bar was going to close. He had, always had two drinks in his hand. Uh, I just have memories of us going to clubs in these cities and in Munich as well. And um, I think it was the P1 we used to go to sometimes. Um, and yeah, we used to like, um, but we're also kind of a band that sticks together. We sound check. We like the sound check. We like to hang out after the show, talk about the show, and it's um, we've known each other since we were, you know, teenagers, yeah. and it's a great atmosphere. And we like to party together. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're still. If there's a few days off, we'll have a little party. You know. Yeah. You know, it, it's okay to party. <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> But it, for me, it's more like I'm the singer, and I can't really, I can't really drink yeah. so much anymore. So I, <laughs> I, I need my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing. I, I, we all do. We come to a certain age. We all need our <laughs> sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I'm going to let you go in a couple of minutes. Uh, you guys haven't played Portugal like in a long time. Um, yeah, it's been a while, right? Yeah. Uh, what can we do to bring you guys back to Portugal? 
I know. We love playing down there, Spain and Portugal. And, and you know, it's. I, I do remember being there, but it's, you're right. It's been a while. It's been a few years now. Yeah. Um, what I can think of, I suppose, pandemic happened and maybe a few festivals disappeared. And uh, I think the business disappeared a little bit, but I think it's coming back. Yeah. So maybe there'll be an offer for a festival next year, next summer or something. I hope so. You know, that'd be great. Yeah. You know, I, I hope so. And uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to let you go. Um, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, you know, I, don't worry. I look, I'm looking forward to hear the new music. If uh, hold your head up, it's a sign of things to come. <laughs> I'm excited. Great. <laughs> oh, well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Joey, okay. th thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Hopefully we can see you guys back in Portugal next year. So, yeah. uh, you know, fingers crossed. Thank you very much again and all the best and hope to see you soon. All right. All right. See you soon. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.